Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Autonauts versus the Pirate Bots. So um, this is going to be a different... Uh, I'm going to try a couple of different things with this Let's Try because this is a game with a lot of depth and a lot of stuff that you can probably miss. It's also a sequel. If you've never heard of Autonauts, I definitely recommend you go take a look. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things with this game and it's going to be a difficult one to cover so I'm going to have to be editing all over the place. So. Um, probably I'll skip the tutorial and just kind of talk about how the gameplay works. Hey there, Chief Autonaut Kyo here, streaming live from the Denki Quadrant with progress on my thriving settlement. Like and subscribe. Very good. Following protocol, I've successfully programmed hundreds of worker bots to efficiently automate industries and take care of my growing folk community's needs. Oh no. Yo, I turned this down a lot and it's very loud. Pirate pirates are destroying everything. Oh no. Invasion detected transmitting distress signal. Captain's log, star date, 1234, arrived safely at Regal. Okay, we're good. Remaining worker bots appear functional. Others likely recruited or recycled by pirate bots will endeavor to return Regal, the seventh settlement, to its former glory. So what is Autonauts? Autonauts is kind of like a automation-based RTS. It's a really, really bad way to describe it, but it's not terrible. Um, you're going to use a very basic programming language in order to uh, control a lot of bots and automate a lot of tasks. Tasks like the ones we're doing right now where we're picking up sticks and logs and all kinds of stuff and adding them to stuff. We can basically automate anything um, that we can do. So like anything that we're doing right now can be assigned to a robot. So something like this, making an ax is something we can automate. We can hand that task off to a robot. Your first tool. Autonautopedia, your handy reference for all tutorials, mission plans, to blueprints, and more. To access all this from the world, select the book button or press the tab. Now do exactly as I tell you. Click the record button, then show your bot what to do. Show your bot how to use a crude ax to chop down a tree. In your bot's brain, you can see program instructions created, created by your actions. So we have our ax. Very important that we are crude, our axe is in our hand, and we go and we chop down a tree. Tree is chopped down. Click the repeat button to add a loop to the bot program you created. Click the play, play button to run your bot program. Your first automation. Your bot won't stop unless its tool breaks or it has no more targets in its search area. So that bot is going to dig holes. And this is what Autonauts is all about. If you played the first Autonauts, then this will all feel very familiar for you. If you haven't played Autonauts, this is basically how you play Autonauts. It's it's um, taking actions and automating them and then basically kind of uh, organizing your tasks into, uh, you know, a, a robot factory. So our forestry is in this zone. We got one robot that digs holes. We got one robot that looks for seeds and plants them in the holes. And then we have one robot that, as soon as a tree pops up in this zone, is going to chop it down. You can do, you can like keep going with this, by the way. So you could have a robot that just looks for logs and then chops them into planks, and then takes uh, sticks and throws them in, uh, in you know, our, our workbench here and makes makes a bunch of tools. We're telling this robot to go to the storage that has sticks in it and then go and deposit it at the workbench. And then we're telling it to go to the rock uh, box and then also add it to this workbench and make a crude box. And then we're going to add a repeat to that. So we've we've now wrapped everything again in another re a repeat loop. This means that the robot is going to make the tool, uh, make, make a crude axes until this workbench is full. And then if the workbench is ever empty, it's going to repeat that. So it's gonna, this, this second repeat loop makes basically make sure 
or ensures that this robot never permanently stops. If we didn't have it, then when the workbench was full, then it would just stop. And as soon as uh, someone takes this crew to ax, then they would not start again. They would just be done. So this means that the robot is gonna go and find an ax if they're, um, t they don't have one in their hands. They don't have one in their hands because their ax is broken. And they're gonna go pick one up and then they're gonna start chopping down trees until they don't have an item in their hand. And then it'll repeat back to the beginning. So what I'm, what I need to do right now is get another workshop going that makes shovels, shovels. And we're gonna need another robot to specifically make shovels. So let's go ahead and find another robot. So use you there. And we're gonna wrap that in a repeat and wrap that in a, until this thing is full. And then we're gonna wrap that in a repeat. And that will ensure that we always have a shovel. Now you, sir. Okay, left click. There we go, that's better. Pick up all those items, uh, your the um, the spade until hand is full, and then start digging. So that means we now have um, our our diggy lad. He he should be good. He should always have tools in hand. Eventually, we're gonna have to deal with the facts that we don't have um, like you know we're grabbing rocks and sticks and stuff. We could also have another robot picking up sticks and throwing them in the box. Why don't we go ahead and do that? this stuff until hands are full, right? So that means the robot's gonna pick up sticks in this area until their hands are full. Then move to stick storage. Um, what we can do is, uh, this shouldn't be here, we don't need that. We don't need that. Add stick to storage. What we'll do is we'll just get rid of everything else, put another repeat here, stick this in there, and then go until hands are empty and then repeat that. So they're going to um, find sticks in this area and pick them up until their hands are full. And then they're gonna move to the storage and then they're gonna add stick to the storage until their hands are empty. Let's see if that works. So he's picking up the sticks and he's picked up four sticks and then he's adding them to the stick box. The problem is that this stick storage is now full, so this this uh, robot can't really do anything. What we can do, do this forever? No, do this until this is full. Until that's full, and if it's not, and then and then repeat. So it's gonna do this until this is full, and if it's ever not full, then it will start doing it again. So that's pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And now it is. It's just repeating ad infinitum. I noticed this game has a day-night cycle. Let's see. All right. So very much the same process over here. We got a robot that ensures there is always a pickaxe available. We've got a robot digging stone over here, and we got another robot who's coming over here picking up the stones, throwing them in the box. So now stones are automated. You can see this process is pretty much good everything is working as intended and we can start working on the next part which is a uh, stick farm set up a stick harvesting operation wooden mallet made any tree bashed oh i see so you can bash trees to get more sticks and so i assume a bashing trees for sticks is more uh a bit more efficient for getting sticks than chopping them down all right, it's been a little bit, and I, uh, I've been pretty busy. Um, I wanted to get a few things done, and I do still have some stuff left to do before we can like actually get to the game. And like I said, this is a game with a lot of depth. It's a game you're gonna sink your teeth into. It's kind of like, almost like survival game, but it's an automation-based game, like almost like a Factorio or a Satisfactory. Um, you can really get into the uh, nitty-gritty of coding these robots. It's really addictive, and I, I really like this game. This game so far is basically the same as Autonauts. There's a little bit of a story behind that, but I'm not really going to get into it. I've revealed a little bit more of the map, so now we have uh, we have our lad here who is supposed to be malleting sticks, but I have yet to make a robot for the mallet. I did a lot of other things instead. 
I uh, basically got made a few robots, made one that would clean up the logs, um, made one that turned logs into planks and sticks, and we have another robot, which I, I don't know where they went. They went somewhere. Okay, I'm not sure what uh, why this guy isn't um, working, but you know what? The good news is we don't really need him. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and clear him. So what we want him to do is actually uh, we want him to make robots. Uh, you can set how many robots you want to make, and that's something you can edit. But he's this is gonna be very uh, not not elegant at all. So we're gonna we're gonna go and grab. Um, a seed we're gonna go and place it here and we're gonna basically teach this robot how to make robots let's just set this to be until um this is full so it's gonna ensure that there's always a bot being made so now it's gonna go and pick up a seed and it's gonna go over to the pole station over there it's quite a long trek but that's something we can work on in the future this is a pretty messy setup it's something i would probably want to like sit down and actually like organize and make very pleasant so he's gonna come back and he's gonna drop off all the planks and then he's gonna go back and grab a log and dump that off and make it and i will say um in this game this game is way more forgiving when it comes to um how much you can do with your bot because it's you know we have a lot of memory um in the early games of the original Autonaut, you have like basically nothing. You can give them like four or five instructions in the very beginning of the game, and you really have to work up to giving them like wild and crazy commands like this. Um, I guess it does tell us that they are like worker bot, like I don't know, three or something. But anyway, um, this game is not so much focused on the progression or the technology progression as it is on the almost semi RTS. Uh, mechanics including defense against pirate robots small silo stacks up to three silos for bonus storage space note you can't use storage while building it i have no idea what that would be for i guess that might be for food and then we have gates and crude walls and stuff space port so that's something we're going to want to make bot database basic server for worker bots wow so you can maybe see how things uh develop in this game um, you know, like, just just getting your basic stuff started means... Oh, these guys are not happy. Oh, getting your, your basic stuff started means um, automating things like resource gathering. Uh, you know, the stuff you would kind of expect. But the fact that you can, you, like, you move very quickly into automating the process of making your, like, remaking your own bots is pretty cool. Um, that's generally something you, you, you know don't do in a lot of other automation games until like much later on i suppose the equivalent like you know like you do like in say um factorio make inserters like pretty early on but um that's for the sake of research purposes i think it's really cool in this game that you're like the first thing you're trying to do is basically automate the process of automation if that makes sense i'm just wondering what uh, a pirate base is going to look like looks like we can't even go over there um, if we look at the map, we can see like how big the map is. We're in a very small portion of it. Looks like this outpost is still guarded. I bet that crumbly old boss tower is using the ca captured folks' sadness to power this force field surrounding this zone. Pirates, but pirate bots won't give up without a fight. You're going to need the right support and tools to remove them. Basic melee threat can be troublesome in greater numbers. Damage 13, and I'm not sure what the 3 means. Damage 13 and 3, it could be. Honestly, this might be the kind of let's try that, that kind of requires a series. Like, I really cannot fully show off this game in one video, um, but I can only, I, I can give you an idea of what kind of gameplay you're going to expect. Um, I played quite a lot of Autobots, and I barely scratched the surface of it. It's... It's a it's a pretty deep game and you can really get into the uh, minutia of like coding the bots. And in this game, the 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 aggressive like 
military aspects are, are pretty interesting. So now that we've got our basic base set up, um, we're gonna have to move on to the next phase. Unfortunately, we can't get to combat until we do a couple of other things first. So we're gonna have to complete a couple of other things, including uh, get automated farming up, trading, and science research. So why don't I go ahead and do that? Some of this will be edited and some of it won't be. Um, I don't know if me puzzling things out is going to be what's entertaining to people rather than seeing how the finished product works um, because then you can kind of figure out how I got there without necessarily seeing how I got there, if that makes sense. So let me, let me get farming going. All right. I haven't actually gotten started on farming yet, but I figured I'd go through the process of learning a little bit anyway uh, and talk a little bit about how I have refined things. So I originally had one of my bots basically taking out a log, breaking it down into planks, and then breaking one of those planks into poles. And then I had another couple of bots picking up poles and dumping them in these storages. And I am, it wasn't clear to me, it might be clear to you why that was a, not a very efficient process because basically at a certain point, the a robot that was picking up the planks would pick up all of the planks and therefore the, the robot that was breaking down some of the planks into poles would get hung up and not be able to perform anymore because all of the planks are gone. Meanwhile, the robot that was picking up the planks wasn't able to pick up enough planks because there weren't enough on the ground, they picked them all up but not enough to actually fill their hands and therefore they would get hung up. So this process was kind of flawed. Instead, we've got a couple of chopping blocks and we have one robot that pulls one log out and chops it into planks. And then um, I think they do this twice and then they pick up all the planks and store it themselves. I will say, um, I think that this game is already a major improvement from Autonauts 1 because you don't have to deal with the limitations of your robots. The first game, Autonauts 1, had major, major limitations to what your robots were capable of, uh, including how much they could carry, if they could store things, and they also had battery powers and had to be continuously cranked. And you had uh, to basically program another robot to walk around and uh, crank robots every once in a while because they would just die. And I really appreciate that this game skips some of the limitations and some of the primitive tech trees of Autonauts and skips right to pure automation and figuring out how to make uh, a series of systems that uh, cooperate with each other. This already puts this game ahead as far as I'm concerned of uh, the original Autonauts. I'm interested to see where this is going. So um, let's get to farming. I'm not even sure why. I guess farming is going to be a thing because we need to make money and we're going to be selling crops. The original game had you feeding people and, you know, trying to grow them um, as the game progressed. So um, I'm interested to see why crops are in this game as well. So let's kind of go through it. So first things first, uh, we have a robot here that is making uh, the blades. I've set it up in a weird way just because it's a kind of a long distance to the rock uh, storage at this point. So, um, sorry about that noise. Basically, I've had them go over to the rock and instead of only grabbing the required rocks necessary to make the blade, which is two, I've had them pick up four so that their hands are completely full. Then come over here and basically they're gonna make a, the first they're gonna check to see if the workshop is full. Um, so if it's full, then they skip basically everything else. If it's not full, then they're going to check if their hands are empty. If it, they're not empty, then they're going to add two rocks to the workbench. Once they've added two work, uh, rocks to the workbench, then the workbench is full. So then they skip the rest of the steps. So then our next step is going to be to get program a robot to start uh, picking up these blades and then using them to cut down crops. All right, so I'm just about finished programming the robot that's going to be farming. So they're, uh, I mean, this is pretty stock standard for all of the robots that do any harvesting. They're going to be picking up a crude blade until their hands are full, which means one blade. And then they're going to be finding crops and using the item in their hand until their hands are empty. And then they go back to the beginning, which is to pick up an item. So let's see that in action. So they've picked up a blade. Oh, well, sometimes you make mistakes. Okay, they're chopping it down and I've limited their scope to this area. Uh, 
I also, it seems to me I'm also going to have to chop down grass, so we might want to get another bot working on that. So let's, let's do that. All right, so now we have a uh, robot which is picking up a blade and chopping down grass. Not sure what that's going to be used for, but I guarantee you it's going to be necessary for something. It looks to me like the cereal is now completely done. Uh, we're going to need to replant, I'm assuming. Oh, I didn't mean to <laughs> pick this guy up. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get him to make a uh, a, a flail. All right, so um, it seems to me that I, it was a mistake to actually store the cereal that we basically have to treat it like the trees. So instead I've just put all of the cereal back in the uh, yard and I'm gonna tell the spot to, to just whack cereal until they're until their tool breaks, basically. So now we're gonna have to deal with the unexpected consequences of having a bunch of cereal and straw strewn about, um, but that's not a big deal. We can we can figure this out, no problem. So I just found out that you can actually automate building structures. I'm not sure how to do it properly yet, so I might just do it, you know, uh, f you know, ingredient to ingredient. So far, I've just got this one robot that will look out for blueprints that need a log and then add that to it. Um, and we can do planks and poles as well. And that way I can automate the construction of, uh, you know, small objects, at least in this area. And if I have to re build a new factory somewhere else, then we'll have to copy this. There are uh, tools in the game to copy a set of instructions. So you could basically, um, you know, make a new robot and give them the same set of instructions. I'm not sure though if you could like copy an entire base of robots and then just like, oh yeah, like give this set of robots the same number of instructions. But we'll have to see. Um, so far I'm, I'm still kind of learning what I can and cannot do or get away with. All right, so I've got this robot here who's um, basically looking for blueprints and adding planks to them until they their hands are empty then they go and get some more planks and uh, they're just constantly looking to see if there's a blueprint available to throw planks on and as soon as their hands are empty then they go and get more planks and I just finished uh, programming a robot that does the same for poles and I figured you know as long as I like need to get small silos done I may as well automate the process um, that include the ingredients that the they require and that way I don't have to worry about poles, planks, and logs, and we get the silos done right away. This will also work for crates, I imagine. Um, they require planks and poles, uh, but certain other things like, uh, for instance, chopping blocks that require axes will be a bit more specific because then we'll have to program robots that, to specifically pick up axes. And All right, now we've got cereal. Um, or at least cereal seed being stored. For the purposes of automation, that's really important. We're probably going to need a... Uh, robot that sows those seeds but uh, an interesting thing we might want to consider is a balance between seeds stored and seeds planted uh, i'm not sure if seeds are what we're going to be selling or if it's going to be the straw that'll be something i have to figure out all right so now we've got a robot that's going to go and grab a spade and they're going to come back here and they're going to dig holes until they oh, until they don't have a tool anymore and then they'll go pick up another tool so now we can start programming uh, this other robot over here to actually start sowing the seeds. So he's gonna take cereal seed until his hands are full and then he's gonna come over here and we're gonna have to pick up the cereal seed as well. Um, we'll record and then we're gonna tell him to plant the seeds in a hole in this area. And again, I want to limit him to this area so that he doesn't dig holes, or sorry, plant cereal, for instance, in this area where there's trees being uh, planted. As you reclaim this world, you will unlock new blueprints to improve your output and income. But first, you need to complete this mission plan by to start trading. So I've thrown down the spaceport, and as you can see, our... Uh, very helpful robots that um, like to build things are adding logs and planks and poles to it. I, I really do enjoy this game. I, I like, like specifically this one, I, I think that this one is a uh, huge leaps above auto, uh, auto, Autonauts because uh, it really does skip a lot of the slog part of the beginning of the first Autonauts. I'm interested to see what combat looks like. Yeah, there we go. So this is a great way of um, ensure you can make it so that you can you always see this area. That would be a good way of 
you know, if you're making bots that are designated to certain areas to marking the area first, and then you know that all of your robots are fitted to that area. Let me see what that looks like. That doesn't look too bad. You can even name it so that uh, you know exactly what's going on. That's so, honestly, that's so elegant. I really appreciate that. We now have the piggy bank built and we have our spaceport. So far right now, all I'm doing is um, storing, uh, or sorry, selling straw. So we're basically just selling the straw that we're getting from the crop fields. But I have um, set up a, a contingency market as well. It, when this silo is full, um, then he's going to switch over to this silo over here. This silo is going to be for the purposes of just selling to the spaceport. You can see cereal seed is worth a lot more than straw. Um, not that we need necessarily a lot of money, but uh, I figured I'd already get things started and we want to make sure that we always have seed for uh, planting and we clearly have tons of it right now, but um, you know, not, you know, we also want to sell it. So we have a, a very rudimentary system for that. All right, first research complete. Uh, some of the sound effects in this game are really loud, but I'm sure that's just a problem, like a, a bug. Good, good job. You completed all your plans that needed to start earning a steady income and you unlocked the technology needed to build basic defenses. All right, so we're building an armory and we're building, well, we've already built the barracks, but I've also got a bot set up to deliver uh, rocks to blueprints and that's already happened. So now we've got an armory and a barracks. Let's see how those things work. I'm way over there. I have to build a scooter that'll increase my speed. It's like the crude sword blueprint. Oh, we just maxed out our piggy bank. That was fast. Okay, I had a chance to uh, figure out why my sticks were being delivered and that uh, prompted me to basically go through all of our bots, every single one and name them. Uh, it may seem anal retentive to you, but uh, it's actually very helpful. And you can also set up teams as well. I have a funny feeling that uh, in the future you'll basically be able to copy paste teams which will be very helpful once you know what everyone's purpose is. I assure you, naming them now will save you a lot of time later. Welcome to the bot database. You can use this to search for bots in the world and to store programs and share them between bots. There you go. That's, uh, we're, we're starting to see the pieces fall into place here. The bot database is one of many structures that can be upgraded. Select this button to start. Note you can't access the dot database while um, upgrading it. Interesting that they're up, uh, introducing us to the bot database right as we need to upgrade it. Add the necessary ingredients to the dot database foundation to upgrade it. The gold required will be automatically taken. Well, you can see our uh, our lads are already doing their thing, and I think what I'll do is I'm actually gonna um, set up seed build delivery right away. So my uh, my way of organization is I do. Um, what, what category they're in and I will set up a team for this but basically this one's going to be in build and this one is going to be for the purposes of delivering seed we're going to want to get him to uh, pull from the seed box so that they always have seed available and they're going to pull until their hands are full and then they're going to deliver to the nearest um, blueprint there we go and they're going to do this until their hands are empty. Whoops. What happened there? And oh no, sorry, until their hands are empty. Okay, and we want to make sure I uh the the reason the pole delivery wasn't working is because their uh their build area wasn't um correct. And it's a good thing I have this build area kind of marked out here so I can I can properly uh, designate where it is. Now that the that's happening, uh, we'll see what maybe what military robots look like. You can now control a defense bot force. Thank you for choosing the automata, uh, autonon, autonomon, autonomon 3000 upgrade package. This enhancement supports the ADF override protocol. You can now make this many defense bots. So we can have 20, but only this many defense bots can run a program at the same time. To transform innocent worker bots into fearless defense bots, you need one more structure. <laughs> Access is okay. Wow, there's a lot of structures needed. Well, we already have that. Uh, select the grunt blueprint. This is the most basic defense bot you can make. Add the necessary ingredients to make the grunt. Ah, uh, uh, I see. 
So this means we're going to need, uh, well, th I don't know if we want to automate this because that means we're going to be constantly making um, grunts instead of basic worker bots. So it might be something we want to do um, ourselves, but maybe in the future we can like uh, automate it and then have like a, some kind of workflow like, you know, only do this if we have like less than this number of work bots or grunt bots. So let's throw this in there and then we'll throw a sword in there and hopefully our sword maker will get to work on making a new sword. Here's your first defense bot. All right, so our second armory has been made. Let's see what we need. A pirate bot dummy. Um, and I, though I did say we don't necessarily want to do anything uh, manually, I think in this case we might only need the one dummy. I could be wrong about that, but we'll see. You need a crude sword of your own to show the defense bot what to do. Select the armory to change the blueprint. All right, so I finally fixed our sword maker. There's several things wrong with him, but no, no worries. Um, so if I pick that up, he should be making himself a new sword. Time to teach your defense bot how to defend itself. Blow your whistle. Select the new defense bot you just made. Hit record. Left click on your pirate bot dummy to show your defense bot how to use a cr crude sword. It's interesting. Select play to run the program. Well, now use its crude sword on any pirate bot it finds in its search area. Now you're ready to make and train an army to take on the pirate bots. Let's see how useful banners and signals can be. Banners and signals are the best way to co coordinate your forces. Okay, so now you have a banner. Let's put it to good use. Whistle to get the attention of your bots. Select the defense bot you taught to defend itself. Select this little button to access the bot's search area options. We want to select the banner instead of the editing area. Okay. Interesting. Can change the size of the banner search area just like you can a bot's. The target inside the little air search area button shows the bot is using the banner search area now. Okay. Defense bots assigned to a banner will try to stay inside its search area which means you can remotely direct where you want the bots to go. It's a simple trick to help you make the most of signs and banners without having to carry them around. Select the ta signs tab. So I can like move it over here. All right, so you can use a banners area to direct bots. So we, we could have a group of like say, you know, five to 10 robots and then they are assigned to this area. And then we can then move them all in to fight a group of pirates. Show you how to make the most of your bot database to easily share programs between bots. Here we go. Select an active defense bot to access its brain. In the bot the database by pressing B or clicking the bot database button. Upload the bot's program to the bot database by clicking the upload button. Uploaded program is ready to share. Close the bot database. Close the bot brain. Now that this bot's program is uploaded to the bot database, you can link other bots to it. Let me show you how. Well, we're gonna need to make another bot, or a grunt. So that's a pretty lengthy process. All right, bot made. Now we select bot to program, select the new bot, select the bot database, and then link their program and then go. Okay, so that means they have all of the same programming as the other bot. Both bots are now linked to the same program. Changing either per bot's program will update the others, but only when the bot is stopped and restarted. Interesting. Okay, that's that's actually really good. It's, it's good that they both share the exact same programming, so you don't have to like edit one and then re-upload the information to the other one. I'm sure in the future we'll, our base would be like attacked by pirates, so you might want to set up like grids of like people or bots patrolling these guys are pretty tanky oof that's super loud removing all pirate bots in the outpost triggered the draw bridge to give you access to the old boss tower the structure is severely weakened so even crude swords should be able to reduce it to rubble in no time um, pirate bot or pirate bot structure. There we go. There we go. Nice. 
Destroying that boss tower disabled the force field to unlock the next zone and reveal new research briefs. Looks like you now have what it takes to defeat the Dread Pirate Robot and their Pirate bo Bot crew. Have fun saving the world. And we have uh, a little person here. Look at you saving your first folk. Wove Hotel. Oh, here we go. Build a Wove Hotel to house folk and keep them happy. Happy folk make Wove, which you can use for structural repairs. Feed folk to improve their happiness so they make even more Wove. That's disgusting. So I guess at this point I would like want to automate berry making so that we can get uh, this whole love thing going on. I hate saying that, but that is that is the thing. And then uh, we're working on the next thing. But like, I think at this point we actually have a pretty solid idea of what, what is going on in this game. I do think that um, probably at a certain point we can expect uh, invasions to be a thing. First best mate to the dread pirate robot and you'd be trespassing on my land. I'll return the favor and send a welcoming party of my own. Ah, so there you go right away. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of potential here and uh, I'm really enjoying that this game's got a lot cleaner uh, of, a, of a kind of a progression system going on than the original automa uh, Autonauts. So uh, I think that I could actually do a better job of keeping things pretty organized. There would definitely be some bumps, but I think that that would be entertaining. But in any case, um, I've done my best to do a thorough kind of let's try of this game because I knew that there was going to be a lot of depth involved. You should know by now if this is the kind of game that's for you. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.